thank you so much for joining me today. Um, my name is Ashley Koff. I'm a registered dietitian for about 20 years. I am CEO of the Better Nutrition Program, where we create better nutrition assessment tools. Um, and today we'll be talking about how total nutrition assessments improve compliance and outcome. But first, I want to give a massive shout out to the team at Fullscript. Um, uh, these education opportunities, I participate in a lot of the webinars, as I'm sure that you do. Um, and I'm just so grateful uh, for what they are doing for us practitioners in terms of bringing together just really great quality learning. Um, and as we go through this today, you're going to see some of the collaborations uh, and ways that I've optimized um, for the Better Nutrition Program and for myself as a practitioner, uh, whether it's optimizing in terms of compliance or optimizing in terms of what I have to do from a business standpoint. Um, and I, so I'm going to be sharing those. And we will have a Q&A, so um, please feel free to drop any of your questions into the question box. You will be receiving the slides, you'll be getting the recording. Um, if you happen to be watching this at a time that is better for you and not live and you have questions, uh, you can also always email me, ashley at thebetternutritionprogram.com, or you can go through our website um, and send me questions there. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to get started. And a shout out to Cam, um, who is also driving on the back end. He might be answering some of your questions or just keeping this moving forward. So. Our agenda today, I want to go through what are our squad goals, right? And why better nutrition? Then we're going to talk about total, which as an ex-cereal advertiser, yes, I sold sugared cereals to American families uh, long before becoming a dietitian, so mea culpa. Total is not a cereal, it's not a better cereal, but it is essential for a better plan for better recommendations. And I'm going to use some case studies from my work over the last uh, 20 years, um, and a couple of them much more recently, um, to explain why total is better for you, better for your clients, and better for those for your business and the outcomes. And then we will have that Q and A, and we'll also go over uh, resources as well. So, oh, moving forward super quick. So there I am, probably in one of my happiest moments on the left uh, in Alaska, celebrating uh, um, just the wilderness and the awesomeness of life. Um, and that's how we all, all as practitioners, we want to. Um, feel right and we all want our patients to feel the way sarah is on the right here she is excited she is empowered she feels awesome um so if we all want the same thing what is that thing well we all want better health right and for those of us on the on the uh, webinar today uh, my guess is we all want better businesses as well right we're in the business of better health and what i want to walk through today is why i think our businesses haven't been optimized regardless of, you know, if you're a chiropractor, an acupuncturist, if you're DO, MD, RD, RN, health coach, whatever initials you have or don't have, um, then it's gonna be really important um, on that part. I'm just checking Nicole's uh, message. Is the audio is going in and out. Um, I'm hoping that it's just you, Nicole. If it's other people, give me a hands up and we'll, we'll keep going on that part. Um, okay, so we want better health, we want better businesses um, on that part. So how do we get it? Well, you know, when we think about better health, we know one thing, right? This is not surprising to anyone on here. We know that it is better nutrition which powers better health. But actually, today, thank you, Krista, today is an amazing day to have this conversation. I don't know who, whether you're in the States or uh, Canada or around the world, um, if you've caught all of the uh, communication around this uh, meat, I, I hesitate to call it a science study, review, et cetera. Um, boy, consumers, you know, I had two texts from my mom, one from my dad, because of course they both are reviewing the science and what they read in the New York Times differently. And everybody's saying like, well, wait, is, it, is this whole meat thing like a jest? Is it better for us, whatever? So what we know is that better nutrition needs actually a definition or said differently, I had to define what puts the better in nutrition. And this is what we have to focus in on when we are talking about that goal of getting and keeping better health and, sh and sharing and helping other people achieve their better health. And that is, there are like two fists. If I was you know, giving this presentation visually, you'd see me with two fists. And one fist is about better nutrition means giving a body what it needs to run better. Now, the other fist is while avoiding reducing intake of ingredients, and certainly if we can environmentally, 
ingredients that can irritate, overwhelm, or disrupt those efforts. And you cannot have better without both of those. We're gonna get into why that's such a cornerstone. Um, those two pieces and how they add up to total is really gonna be what's so critical for better health. Okay, so how do we know if what they're doing is actually better? Well, we could have said just pay attention to the science, but um, there's a lot of questions. And even within the science, one of the reasons there's a lot of inconsistencies in the science is that a lot of these tools are not better. You know, BMI had um, had and maybe still has, um, you'll note a bias in my communication there, uh, body mass index has a role perhaps, and perhaps that role is to look at mass, you know, large scale numbers and kind of group people into areas. Um, but, you know, for any of us who have uh, had super healthy patients that are in the overweight or obese section, uh, we know that BMI is certainly not the marker of their health and not alone on that part. Uh, we have lab tests and lab tests can tell us so much that's really important. Um, but if 1% of your total magnesium is going to be in the blood, it's really not telling us the whole story of if your cells, which are dependent on magnesium to turn off the stress response, if they have enough magnesium in, in the cells um, throughout the body. Our genetics, we're, it's so exciting, genetics, genomics, we're learning so much these days, but our genetics don't tell us, actually, they, they tell us about how the body may work. Um, they also will tell us about things like, that give us insights into forms of nutrients or you know things that we need to focus on, um, but they are not going to tell us about our current total nutrition and if it's better for our body. They might provide some insight, but not exclusively. Um, we could go back to a hammer and a wrench. We could use you know a looking glass. I mean, these are all the things, right, that we're constantly pulling the, the tools out of our um, bag to try to help somebody with assessment. There are all these things online that we can try to assess um, their health. Uh, so how do we actually know if all of these tools uh, that we have are not working better? Well, one of the reasons they're not better is these assessments are missing core pieces. And that's what we want to address today. You can't have personalized recommendations that lead to better compliance and outcomes unless you fill in those missing pieces. And the tools that we've had historically do not help us easily efficiently, truthfully fill in all of those missing pieces. So that's what we're going to do today. So why is Total not a better cereal? I could go on and on about that, but we're actually gonna talk about why Total is essential. It's the core of what you need in a better nutrition assessment. There are so many ways that we can get in nutrients today, right? We can get them in, obviously we're talking with Fullscript here on, on behalf of Fullscript. And so of course we can get them in from dietary supplements. Um, we get nutrients in from skincare. We have sprays and potions and powders, baths, like all these different things. And of course our food and our drink choices. So if we isolate and identify any one of those or said differently, if we miss any of those, we will not have a better assessment. Why does that matter? If the whole the foundation on which you build your house or where and we'll call that the foundation on which you're building your recommendations, how you're going to build things on top of that is full of holes, you cannot build a better foundation. And that's what we're seeing today with a lot of the recommendations. It's why we see our patients, um, you know, and even sometimes for us, it can be confusing. Why are we not getting the outcomes that we're expecting? Because uh, we see what we've made the recommendations for, but maybe we don't have the information from them that we need. So what is a better nutrition assessment? This is kind of in that land of like, okay, sometimes we know that there are practitioners, it's nobody here, but sometimes who, you know, just the, the way that the situation is going on, the best that they can get is maybe some super basic information about food and beverage, um, you know, some basic health information and BMI. That's, very, that's poor when it comes to nutrition assessment. Now, something that might be okay is if we add in then maybe age and gender and also look at medications. But the sweet spot, the area we have to be in to fill those missing pieces, we have to assess all of this. And as a dear friend of mine, um, when I was talking to her about this project and just kind of why I've been so passionate about assessment and really focusing on this when there are all these two and three and 4.0 solutions that are popping up, you know, in terms of different testing and things that we can learn about, 
And I kept saying to her, you know, well, we've got to make sure, you know, I know as a dietitian for 20 years, I've been asking question after question after question of my patients. I've had them take photos of things. And before that, I had them bring in all the bottles and then write down things. And, you know, we're tracking all of this stuff. And she said to me, you know what, Ashley, she's a, um, an integrative uh, medicine doctor for, you know, over 20 years. And she said to me, what you're doing here by helping remind us that we need to do this total nutrition assessment, we know we need to do this. We train this way in integrative medicine, but we don't have the time and it isn't easy. And we don't necessarily get the information that we need from our patients, especially at the time that we need it. And so that's what we're gonna go through today to make sure that we can help you hone in on how to do that. So what we're looking for is that more complete picture. I am not saying skip the lab test, don't get on the scale, don't look in the ears, don't ask them about their stress level, you know, any of that stuff. I'm just saying that all of this other stuff, their skincare, their medications, their beverage, all of these different things need to be included in your discussion. I'll tell you a tale about a patient that I just recently was working with, um, and he had been on his statin medication for about four or five years, and it was a real pain point for him. He did not want to be on it, um, but his doctor said, you know, uh, the class, like fa family, you know, uh, family history, your risk, you're not willing to eat certain ways. I really feel, you know, I want you to be on this statin. And so he has been on the statin eating well. We talked about, you know, he takes his coenzyme Q10, the, he takes it at different times. We, and we've been on this mission to lower his statin levels. So you can imagine my being upset when he came in and said to me, I saw my doctor and he's increasing my statin. I said, well, so first of all, you've actually lost weight and toned up. I said, you know, maybe with your muscle, it's a little, and he's like, no, no, we've actually lost weight. You're eating well. I could not, you know, I'm racking my brain what was going on. Well. There's $20 for anyone in the box who can tell me what was going on. No, I'm just kidding. I, I'm not going to take your money here. But what was going on was that he had um, had he had the aging process occurring, like many of us, and uh, as a basketball player, um, and I loved it. He was playing, you know, two or three times uh, a week, but he was having some uh, joint pain. And with his joint pain, somebody suggested that he start using CBD. And so he was using a great product, a full spectrum, um, hemp derived, great, you know, coconut oil, like you name it, great product. Um, unfortunately though, he was using it in the evening, which is also when he was taking his statin drug, which it, and he was taking his CoQ10 in the morning. And what we came to identify, uh, and it's been about six months now, um, we came to identify that there was a competition that was going on, an interaction there. And the doctor said to me, how in the world did you think to know, ask about skincare? And I said, well, I'll just tell you this. I happen to have a friend who plays uh, basketball and we go through the skincare, you know, and I said, and I love the pro that product. And so we were chatting about basketball and this whole thing. But, you know, if we had done an assessment that asked about these things, we would have heard about that first. And the, uh, the opportunity or the, the, the outcome that we were able to avoid here was him actually increasing a statin medication, which, as we all know, could also have negative implications for testosterone and other things. So let's dive into, that's one example of a case study that I wanna share with you. Let's dive into how these better nutrition assessments um, can work for you to make things easier and more effective and more efficient, both for you with your clients, your clients with you, and then also with your business. I wanted to give a shout out, by the way, to any of my colleagues who are dietitians who happen to be listening in early October. Um, if you happen to be coming to FENCI, uh, we will be, um, and I will be actually with the full script team at both the DIFM um, all day event, and then also we will have a booth number 371. So I would love to meet you in person. So I just wanted to make sure that I uh, get that part in. For any of the rest of you, I'd love to meet you over Skype so we can set that up as well. Okay, so how many people here think that keto is the problem, right? Or it, whether you make a judgment that keto is amazing or keto is the problem, you could probably um, Google and you could find your, um, you could find the answer, um, uh, you know, to that question, like it, in defense of both of them, right? And so with keto, um, we really don't need to make a judgment. We can make a judgment or that the conversation we want to be having with our clients is, if your keto plan is not consistently giving your body what it needs to run better, keto, your keto 
is the problem, not keto in, gen in general, right? And so it takes the pressure off to be, to say like, oh, keto's good or keto's bad, or unless you have, you know, seizures, we shouldn't be doing any of this stuff. No, what I like to say is, so if you decide to follow a keto diet for any reason, you have, your body has not changed its needs for magnesium. So in terms of the magnesium, you have to turn around and you have to say like, so if I'm not going to get it from food, if I'm choosing not to get it from food because I'm following a keto plan, then I have to get it from supplements. But the other thing that you can do is you can actually explain how on a keto diet, you could meet your magnesium needs or potentially come closer. But what we need to do that is we need to be able to assess what is your magnesium intake currently. So the way that we do it, and these are examples of, of the tools that, that we have, is doing this magnesium evaluation. This was actually the first tool that I ever created. And I was like, you know what? I'm so tired of just listing off a statistic and saying that 70% of Americans don't get in enough magnesium. What about the fact that if, what if we actually helped them? And you know, the answer isn't always a supplement um, or said differently, sometimes I have to convince them that they should spend money on a supplement and this is going to be the way that I can do it. When I ask questions about, do you eat any of these foods? And of course, if you're following a keto diet, you'll recognize that some of these, like maybe hemp hearts totally could work, um, but others of these, your whole grains, your beans, some of the other ones aren't going to work, right? So if your number at the end of all of this isn't adding up closer to 400, which is the RDA, which I professionally think is still a little bit low for most of us, then we're gonna turn around and say, we probably need to look at a supplement. And also depending on your answers in section C, you also may need to look at adjusting things. So just like I had to look at, and oh, by the way, I didn't take my client off of the CBD. I just changed when he was using the CBD and it just wasn't at the same time as the statin. Um, we did go off of it, I take that back. He went off of it for a couple of weeks for us to see if his uh, levels normalized, I think six weeks, and then we added it back in. Um, and I saw your, your question, Marjorie. I can't recall which statin, but our CBD guide goes through which statins have an interaction potential um, with CBD versus some of the others that um, there's less of a concern. Um, and, so, and I can always get you that information. So uh, what we're talking about with the magnesium is if you are, you know, maybe it's that you're taking the calcium and the magnesium at the same time. Maybe it's that with your magnesium intake, um, maybe the form, maybe it's magnesium oxide and we really need a glycinate or a threonate or, you know, something else in that space. And so we'll learn a lot and be able to hyper focus in on how to get somebody um, doing what they need to do from a magnesium standpoint. And of course that, oh, by the way, is literally just one nutrient in the whole world of is your keto giving your body what it needs to run better so one of the opportunities for any of you from a business standpoint is to help keto folks who want to be keto or keto ish which is what i find a lot of my clients want to do be keto ish right now and i'm just picking on keto uh be keto ish but they need their total nutrition to be assessed and to be tuned up to meet the needs based on keto. It's kind of like if you changed your hair color, you probably wanna change your makeup, maybe you're going to change some of the clothes in your wardrobe, so we need to do you know, that part as well. And yes, there's a CBD guide at the Better Nutrition Program, which asks questions um, that you and your patients should go over and also shares our expert information um, on that part. Um, and I will get, I, I don't actually, the tools for testing for keto and bodies, I'll get to some of these other questions at the end, um, but thank you. And if I don't, I'll, I can always answer Ashley at the Better Nutrition Program. Um, okay, so that's magnesium and keto. Just to be clear, I'm not saying that magnesium is the only thing associated with keto, but I just like to start there because I'll tell someone that what if your keto diet is going to keep your, is going to make you more stressed or not address your stress and as a result, not allow you to lose weight, not allow you to sleep better, et cetera. And then they start to listen. So that's that part. Okay. So now this is a, this is another one of a, um, this is a bigger case study. This is kind of the all in one reflux, bloating, acne, oh my, everything is going on. And so a woman reached out to me, um, an older, uh, not that old, I think she was in her 50s, um, and went over, you know, talking about the bloating. Um, it said to me, I'm actually not constipated because uh, basically I don't let myself get constipated. I drink this tea. If, uh, and you can see this is, this is her like chicken scratch in there. Um, sorry, I'm not, uh, 
uh, you'll see it when you get the slides, but um, I can just walk you through what, what it says on that part. So for me, I gather all of this information ahead of time. So in order to, and I actually ripped, I showed you my actual email that I send to somebody, which is great, here's where I'm located. Um, and it says, please fill out the attached forms, one for each of you and send them to me by um, the date. Make sure to include photos of any supplements. Now, what I will tell you on this part is I do not see a client if they don't send these to me 72 hours before. And um, I do not believe in operating my business out of fear. If that client goes away, there is there are plenty of other clients that are there. I've been doing this for 20 years. I also charge a pretty penny, and I want to make sure that they are getting great outcomes. Uh, and I have to have all of this information because the more information that I have, the more prepared I am in my initial conversations, it actually helps me to prep a roadmap so that I can get exactly the information that I need to get. So I'm asking questions about, you know, are you going number one? Are you going number two? How do you smell? Um, are you sitting all day? You know, what's going on? You know, questions about your medications, all these other things. That's the digestive evaluation. It goes to every single one of my patients along with a food journal and a basic intake form that includes my HIPAA compliance and these things. Now, some of you have said, well, I already have a 15 page uh, intake form and you know, how can I add these other forms? So I would just, I would encourage you to consider whether or not that 15 page intake form is actually giving you, if you are using all of the information and if your clients are filling it all out and you feel like it really has them arriving and understanding you know, what you're gonna talk about, great. Um, I found that none of the intake forms that were out there could do what I need to do this efficiently, which is three quick pages of uh, questions. And I also find that having them check the boxes or if you happen to work on practice better, our rainbow evaluation is uh, free on there and we're uploading our other evaluations um, for those that uh, purchase our tools and also uh, use practice better because some people like to do it digitally. And so we're offering that um, as well. Um, and it's just, for me, it's better. Like I wanted to have a better roadmap. And so one of the things that I will tell you right now is on Fullscript, um, I, I actually provide several of my roadmaps by way of protocols. And if you guys are um, professionals that have areas of expertise, um, if you have certain protocols that you're working on, it's also something that you can consider developing. This actually didn't take me a lot of time because I do these so often. And what's really great about the full script protocols is they are not looking for like, oh, which supplements do you take? You will see in here, I have lifestyle recommendations, I have nutrition food recommendations, then I have the specific supplement recommendations. So you could read this ahead of time um, and then figure out how you want to implement these things, or you could actually even share it with your clients. And you actually don't even have to be a member of Fullscript. Um, I hope that you are, that you have your own store. Um, but if um, you are overwhelmed, uh, like many of us running our businesses and haven't set yours up, um, we also, Cam is going to drop into the uh, chat box a link because we have a link that allows you to get the Better Nutrition Program Supplement Store, which is took me about six months to make, and it's got all of our, and I updated, uh, it has all of our recommendations in there, and then it has them cataloged or categorized based on these different protocols and recommendations. So you can actually get that as the back end, um, so it's a white label. We never, we're not involved in your business in any capacity. You just get that, and then you can, um, you just focus on your branding, and then on how you want to use it. Uh, I regularly send the protocols out to people, um, just also as a refresher, and share that information. There's also great full script protocols that are on there as well. Okay. So I got a roadmap, just to remind us, because I bumped over to the protocol here. Um, we, I had this, and from this, I was ready for this. This is my roadmap to my session with her. What medications and supplements are you taking and how often? I needed to dive a little bit further into that because there were some inconsistencies um, in that information um, on there, like in terms of, and if you dive into her chicken scratch, you know, she said, no, I don't do this, but yes, I'm taking this, right? We all know that. And one of the things when I worked on, um, we've created over about 35 of these evaluations. We've got over 40 menus. We've got over 50 guides. Um, yes, and to carry, they are all available at the Better Nutrition Program, um, and Cam will drop a link in, or he'll, he'll share some stuff with us on that part. Um, but in doing that, um, 
when I was creating them, I worked with somebody who actually helps me and helped me understand her background is um, helping to get the best information out of people in unbiased, right? So I'm probably not saying that uh, correctly, so I'll apologize to her on how I present it. But how we ask the questions, um, how simple they are, what language, we don't want them to lead somebody thinking that there's a correct answer. We just want to know what are you doing by way of magnesium or calcium or caffeine or that kind of thing. So I, we did that assessment and it was really important for me to get a visual of her calcium and uh, her multi because I was getting some conflicting information there. Needed to assess her added sugar intake, um, especially because of the bloating, we were talking about that. I also wanted to, as I'm talking now, I'm moving into, I'm going to focus her on tuning up her digestion as a foundational part of what we're doing. And so I wanted to introduce as, uh, alkaline formers and make sure that we're getting those foods in because I saw that from her food journal, we were missing a good amount of those. But I also, as a result, needed to talk about also what are acid formers in a way that makes sure that she knows that you know th these aren't bad foods. They're just ones that we're going to need to make sure that we make choices about and have a better balance on that part. Um, we also wanted to talk about, you know, obviously there are common gas and uh, bloat producing foods, but also are you chewing gum? Are you using a straw? Are you drinking bubbles? Um, bubble water, really popular. Bubbles in, in a system that isn't moving well, bloating happens, right? Um, so those bubbles don't have anywhere to go unless they become gas. And of course, that's also something that she was complaining about. And then we were also talking about stress and I already was talking about the magnesium evaluation. So I'm gonna wanna talk to her about how her collective stress, both workouts and um, positive stresses, but how they're all affecting digestion, right? How that contraction is occurring in the body and how we need to create that relaxation. Um, again, looking at that magnesium and calcium uh, balance. And the more that I can tie each of these into certain nutrients and then foods, the less it feels like 10 separate things um, that I'm trying to accomplish and more, hey, let me dimensionalize and help you understand what our goals are there. And then one of the things I'm going to introduce her to is to talk about liquid nutrition as a tool um, when done better, um, nutrient balance, water, all of these things to help her feel better when she's bloated. So when she gets higher up on that scale of bloated on a scale of one to 10, let's jump in with some liquid nutrition options uh, so that her evening doesn't turn into her either eating things that she doesn't want to choose because she's just upset about being bloated or just feeling badly and not showing up in her life the way that she wants to show. She had asked me in particular um, if it was, she said, maybe I'm just allergic, right? So I'm, I'm allergic to these foods. And so what I talked to her about uh, and what I was intending to talk to her about um, in this roadmap is the difference between food allergies and intolerances and then also an irritated system. Should you go out right now and do GI mapping? Should you go out right now and do food allergy testing? Or is it a better thing for us to do to tune up your digestion and then do that test because it's going to hopefully help reduce some of the, um, the, the things that could be irritating um, on that part as well. Uh, and then I'll discuss um, better nutrition with her to just kind of look at how do we make sure that the four pillars being quality, quantity, nutrient balance, and frequency, and how do we make sure that we create that balance um, as often as possible, you know, throughout the day um, as a way to give our body, um, uh, you know, what it needs on that, on that side. Um, okay, so that was the roadmap. And then here's her health plan. So I'm not going to go deep into this because you're going to get the slides, but the place that I started, which would be a great place for me to start right now, which would be to take some very deep breaths because I launch into it and I'm just uh, talking, but I'll do that afterwards. Um, I wanted her to understand functionally, physiologically, what are those things that we can do to help her body adjust um, and maybe turn off the stress response, um, how to downgrade the stress response, how to reduce some of that bloating. And I wanted to start here and actually demonstrate it in the office um, and then have her do that. So she now has a tool. That's her first tool that she can interact with on that level. The second tool is this balance of, can we actually get in alkaline forming foods? Now I went through with her as we were looking at her meal plan, what those foods are and why, but I also know that I talk a lot in those sessions and I wanna make sure that she um, can go home and digest some of this information better. And so I give her that guide uh, to take home. We already talked about the liquid nutrition. I give her some ideas of recipes. 
often what I do in that space is I look at ingredients that are already in her meal plan and we talk about getting them in. One of the fun ones is to blend frozen cauliflower, as many of you know, and frozen vegetables into liquid nutrition, but especially with the, the cruciferous vegetables or ones that are more likely to cause some bloating, then that's going to be a way for me to help her with um, reducing the bloating, but still getting in the positive nutrients from those foods. And then um, I run a 30 day or uh, usually with my patients, it's 30 days at minimum. I try to do for 10 or 15 days um, the digestive tune up where we start with some of these very specific uh, nutrients that we're getting in. I use a product Glutagenics from Metagenics. There are other glutamine products, but I really love this one with the deglycerizinated licorice and aloe. Um, also explain the role of digestive enzymes throughout that part. Um, the better calcium menu uh, to show, because I actually removed her calcium supplement um, and we just made sure that she was getting in calcium via food. She was already doing really well on that part. And I wanted the magnesium to be able to deliver both from a food and a supplement standpoint. And we also significantly reduced her intake of uh, supplements for this time period and moved as many of them over to powdered as possible just to make things easier on her digestion. I also had her tracking with me digitally using the Better Nutrition Journal. And when she would hit those times that are higher on bloat, one, we would look at what was going on. One of the reasons I love the Better Nutrition Journal is it looks at what's going on, fitness, sleep, activity, uh, excuse me, um, anxiety, you know, all these different things, as well as your food and your supplement, you know. So we're, when we're looking at the whole part of it, we can get a better sense of what might be contributing um, so that we don't, you know, just say, oh, I bet it was that food that you ate, you know, because very often that's not the case. Um, okay, and so the final one, and you guys, this is so key, especially with those protocols and with the the taking of having them take the quizzes, um, which you can, oh, by the way, we did her digestive evaluation uh, after three months, horse of a different color in terms of how well she was doing and um, what things we were now working well and what we still wanted to work on. And so I'm a really big believer in working with our clients to um, uh, measure their success. It also tends to work great for your business because you can get testimonials that way. But you can also share these tools with your with her other practitioners as a way of you really being the person who is perceived as and who is playing the role as the coach on this total nutrition assessment. So we've looked at everything here. One of the things that I left out here um, was we looked at uh, what she could do by way of a bath and then um, uh, we also actually changed some of her skincare because there were two ingredients in skincare um, that were uh, things that I thought could be potentially irritating um, to her digestion as well uh, long term. So make those recommendations as well. Okay, so breathing. Everybody hopefully still with me. If you have any questions, remember to drop them into the question box. Um, just taking a sip of water. Just a reminder, we're going to have a Q&A. I am going to walk through, and I go through these at lightning speed so that I have enough time uh, with all of you. Um, I'm going to walk through Joe, which is um, Joe just wants to be statin free. Um, this is a different person than the person I was talking about with his statin and the CBD before. But uh, boy, um, there are you know so many people in this country that are really looking to do heart health better. And I think that this is one of those amazing places that you can intervene in discussion around total nutrition. Now, one of the things that I'm not gonna do on this uh, particular case study is dive too deeply into the digestive part because I talked a bit about that with the last one, but that is, of course, excuse me, foundational here. So um, Joe had a family history of elevated cholesterol, young guy, went to see his doctor, his cholesterol was high, my blood pressure is kind of up, life is pretty stressful, but I work out. You know, he's like, my workouts actually help me deal with my stress. Um, and it turned out it was very stressful. Um, he was having a, there was a very hostile uh, work takeover. I'm probably using the wrong words, but something going on with the takeover of his company or different things. Um, they were letting people go. He had been a founding uh, person in the company. And so, you know, he was taking a lot of responsibility for people losing their jobs. And it was also hitting things at home because he wasn't feeling like talking about it at home, but also was bringing all of that home. We can all imagine on that part. Um, these were some of the labs that he had shared with me. And then just in the email, I really don't want to take the statin, but my doctor said I should try. Um, that He said that I could try nutrition, but just for three months, though he doesn't think it will work. 
Um, and so his wife uh, was like, let's do it, looked online. And so he's been taking CoQ10 and fish oil, but he also added a calcium because he gave, he gave up dairy because dairy upsets his stomach. Um, and so we, that, those are sort of the insights that I had. So what I did, just like with the other patient, was I had him do the digestive evaluation. Turns out dairy was, whether chicken and egg, whether the dairy was upsetting his stomach or he had an upset stomach and dairy you know, was lactose intolerant and, and was uh, dealing with that part, um, we will never know, but uh, there was definitely digestive upset. Um, and then we went into heart health evaluation. And this is really important, um, especially when, uh, and we have a, a, actually um, specifically a men's health tool. And one of the reasons for that is I've learned from uh, one of my favorite men's health experts, um, Dr. Miles Spar, that how we talk to men and how we ask questions and things like that um, need to be done differently. And so that was, uh, that was really helpful for me. And so I look at that um, and probably in this instance, I wonder, would I ask him the heart one or the men's health one knowing that I have, but they're both getting at the kind of information that we need. I'm going to pause because I do see some questions. I want to make sure I'm not missing something from the last one. Um, great. I will go over skincare as a discussion. Um, uh, great. Scientific research informing alkaline foods in case study number two. What ingredients um, in skincare? Okay, great. Uh, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to go through this one and then we can unpack all of those. And again, if for any reason I don't answer your particular question um, or if you have to pop off or anything else like that, Ashley at the Better Nutrition Program .com. Um, And uh, okay, so in here, I'm just trying to get some information about what he's consuming. And one of the things that I asked him to do here, and you can also do it at the end in the notes section, but I wanted to know, are there foods, just X out, things that you won't have, and then underline the things that you are that you like to have. And so, you know, he went through and did that. And so I was starting to get some questions up here. I was starting to think, huh, avoiding most fruits except for berries, avoiding not getting in these really except for greens, won't have any starchy vegetables. And so it was not a surprise to me when he said, I'm avoiding uh, grains now and most fruits, et cetera. So we kind of know where, you know, this is one of those lower carbohydrate, I'm avoiding most carbohydrates um, on that part. And then we see, you know, some additional information on, you know, the type of seafood. Um, he's not having dairy most of the time. So we'll, we'll get some more information on that part. Um, and, you know, treats and sugar and, and those sorts of things, we get some good intel on. And then asking about the supplements. Remember, he just started taking CoQ10, um, not taking red yeast rice, uh, taking a fish oil supplement. And then I would ask again about an omega-3 or fish oil. I asked the question that way because if they are confused about that question, is it an omega-3 or is it a fish oil, it opens the door for me to be able to have that conversation. He started a calcium, but you can see no magnesium, no vitamin K, um, not taking anything from a digestive health standpoint, et cetera. Okay, I don't know why my thing is leaping forward, apologies. Uh, and then additionally, we've got um, just the, the quality, um, didn't really have much information there in terms of the quality of the ingredients. Sometimes that's very helpful, sometimes not. The money shot for me is over here in section B, where I learned so much about his stress, um, inactivity, what's going on digestively. And this is really what informs so much of the roadmap, right? Because at the end of the day, there is zero way that I don't even know if that maybe the statin could have worked, but I don't even know that the statin would have worked uh, effectively, right? Depends on how you define working um, in terms of long term for health if we don't improve his digestion. So we had to focus on digestion. And I had to explain to him that digestion is going to be, if your doctor gave you three months for us to see if food and changing diet and lifestyle can impact your cholesterol, um, and we don't have to do the statin, um, or we do a lower dose of the statin, um, then I'm asking him for another month because I want a month to tune up digestion before, right? But that also in asking allows me to have a conversation with the doctor and it allows me to share these tools and it allows me to explain what my approach is, which in my mind is the best way. I work with a lot of practitioners that are not integratively minded and are not open to any of this at the outset. But as long as I can be clear and explain what I'm doing and it doesn't seem like I'm just, you know, sharing one thing or, you know, going off the rails here, uh, then usually I can bring them on board. Usually. Right. OK. 
So one of the things that we talked about is digestion. And then, um, and I'm sure all of you would do this. Uh, one of the things I also want to go over is what is inflammation? How does it work? What are the labs showing us? What's better on that part? Um, and what is chronic, inappropriate, unhealthy inflammation as opposed to what's the role of the inflammatory response when it's healthy? Then it was absolutely critical that we talk about the role of calcium in heart health and in overall health because just adding in that calcium supplement, and as we'll learn, also having added in an almond milk instead of dairy, which had 50% more calcium, we were starting to nudge the calcium intake up very high, um, which is going to mean that we, you know, we're going to be in a constant catch-up game with magnesium to get in a better balance for that stress response. I didn't have any information about his vitamin D, and so I felt that would be really important. Um, and then we had to have a conversation about stress. And the conversation about stress was, of course, it's here. Um, it is not going away. I am not going to tell you to stop stressing. I'm going to giving, give you some information about how we can help the body turn off the stress response a little bit better. But what I want to understand, because your blood pressure is also elevated, we've got to look at nutrient-wise, what can I do to help your body respond to your situation better? And then, oh, by the way, and you'll see this in my notes, I'm going to recommend somebody that you talk to because um, we can see this, you know, it was kind of like the trains going off the tracks at, at this point. Um, and really to address loneliness, uh, and we want to talk about sleep and breathing. <clears throat> and then I felt it was really important. Oh, and part of it I learned with his exercise, he was doing very high intensity training. Um, but I wanted to learn, I wanted to, to, to find a way to talk about diets um, to talk about nutrition in a way that I could say, hey, if you are paleo grain free, if you're avoiding fruits, if you're avoiding all carbs, all of this, um, I'm a little, it's going to make certain things more difficult for us. We know your body needs fiber to help us, you know, with the reduction of uh, in elimination, uh, not just your digestive elimination, but with removing cholesterol. Um, we also know that um, there are, when it comes to proteins and fats, some are better. So if you're just choosing them, let's see if we can improve which ones, because we've talked about inflammation, we're going to talk about inflammation, et cetera. And you got to get in magnesium and you got to get in B vitamins. And I also need to understand your potassium and your sodium balances. And not all of this can I accomplish by way of supplements. And also not all of this do I want to accomplish by way of supplements. But I also want my patient to win in three months. So I'm looking, I'm playing the long game with him and with his doctor. And, you know, he hired me to keep him off of a statin drug. And so I'm like, okay, how can I start there? But I'm not, you're not going to see me giving him a bunch of potassium as a supplement, but I might give him fiber and magnesium and B vitamins as a supplement if we're not going to change his carbohydrate, you know, if he's, if he's not going to change the carbohydrate piece uh, in that time period. And that's really exactly what happened. We ended up doing the Better Nutrition Digestive Tune-Up Program, um, which is 30 days. I'm actually kicking one off on October 16th. Uh, if you or any of your clients want to join, you're welcome to go through it with us. Uh, and then um, it's also a program that I offer white labeled for practitioners. So if you wanna go through it and then rip it and use it in January or with your own clients or any of that stuff, we give you all the slides and the resources um, because I'm so passionate about it being step one for pretty much every patient that's out there. Um, and doing that tune-up is uh, really not about, it's not a reset, it's not curing, it's not restoring, replenishing, doing everything. It's just a tune-up, right? It's like going on a road trip. And before you go on the road trip, you get your car checked out because it would be nice to avoid things that could be avoided, but you still might pop a tire when you're out or you still might you know, come up with an issue. Um, so I just think that the time to do this is before the holidays. Um, and uh, I will share information with you guys on how to do that at the end. Um, so we talked about, and very similar to the first patient, gosh, I remember when I learned the 478 breath, I was like, we kind of all need to be doing this. I love this. The 478 breath, the meditation app. And I now have a new favorite app um, called XPT Life. So X like Xerox, P is in Paul, T is in Tom, Life. Um, it's the Laird Hamilton and Gabby Reese and um, coach PJ Nessler. And PJ does just, I mean, mind-blowing for me, um, his work in breathing. And the thing that he said that really got me, and I think you guys as practitioners are going to feel the same way, is think of your breathing like reps. And if you did 10 squats and you did eight of them poorly, 
you're probably not going to get any good results, but you also are very likely to injure yourself, right? And so if we're breathing, I think it's like 50,000 times in a day, that's like how many of those reps are going to be ones that are work moving you towards better health or keeping you from your better health. So I think there's almost nothing more powerful than we can do today than help our patients learn to breathe better. Um, I'll step off of the breathing soapbox and I will now say that also in that stress management, obviously I was talking about magnesium. So what I did with him also is we actually used our, mag our Mediterranean menu and we went through and showed how meals could be low carb, but Mediterranean. And then also went through our potassium menu and circled and kind of did a, a meld using those two menus to help get him to commit to certain things on his food plan where we could improve the quality and we could have nutrient diversity and we could start to have some of the things that would help him be successful because I shared um, and it's XPT Life, Aubrey. Um, great spelling, by the way. I've never seen that, uh, uh, but great spelling of your name. Um, XPT Life is the name of the app. Uh, you can also hit me up on social media and I'll, I'll share that one uh, with you if that's helpful. Okay. And the reason for the Mediterranean is, you guys, we know from research that the Mediterranean diet competes, right, with the results from a statin. So why not start there? But we had this whole issue of him not wanting to have any carbohydrates or being very low carbohydrates. So um, we went with a fiber supplement, we went with a magnesium supplement, uh, we went and we took him off his calcium supplement and we went with a uh, B vitamin, um, a methylated B vitamin blend um, to get that part in. And But what we did not do was go with a uh, potassium supplement. We focused on foods and beverages. Turned out he really liked coconut water and it was low enough in carbohydrate. We spaced it out twice in the day and gave him some liquid nutrition ideas told him to get the vitamin D test. And then I wanted him to weekly test his blood pressure. Um, so, and I sent that referral over to his practitioner. I referred a therapist. And then we did a retest of his cholesterol 90 days plus 30, right? So it's 120 days. I got permission for that. I said, let's, I would really like him to do the digestive tune up for the 30 days. And then I'll retest after 90 days. And then of course I offered to share all of this with um, his practitioners. Um, and actually, I will add in this practitioner, I shared his results with his therapist, but I also shared his results with um, the, the team that he had a, a coach or somebody who was doing like their men's group. Um, I don't know what that individual's, um, if, what his uh, specific light um, credentials were in the fitness space, but they were doing that there. And I actually ended up getting a client out of that one as well. Um, and Joe is doing great. Although I wondered when I posted this picture, I look back at it now, I'm like, I'm not sure that that looks like such a happy uh, person on that part. We still have Joe off of a statin. Um, he is doing great. This is about, I think we're, we're either at two or three years, I have to remember. Um, and you know what we've done on this part over time, the carbohydrates, well, they had another child. And so part of it was um, having an infant in the house and going back to like, okay, I, I am gonna be grabbing some of these things. But we also had a lot of conversations about the role of carbohydrate and energy. Um, and we've also evolved his plan. He uses some um, adaptogen herbs and he's also doing some karate and really great on that part. Um, his doctor has been a great referral source for me. And one of the things that makes me really happy is that his therapist is now using in her practice digestive and magnesium evaluations. And we talk a lot about how to um, get uh, people at least consuming more magnesium rich foods, or she refers out to a practitioner um, you know, on the supplement side. I've given her some, some information on that part as well. And really at the end of the day, I had all that information before I saw him. Remember, I also had the digestive evaluation and this and a food journal and the email that he had sent me. So this can feel daunting to uh, accomplish in one session, in our initial session. Uh, but when I had this roadmap, I could then both sit and listen to him and engage in these discussions and have this conversation. And then what I did from a roadmap standpoint was we laid out what we would work on each week. Um, but the first thing that we did was those uh, three to four weeks of the digestive tune-up on that part. Okay. So... Net net, my recommendations, of course, I'm always open to hearing from other practitioners. I fundamentally believe this is where you start. Um, there are also other tools that you can then use. So we've got our digestive tune-up. Uh, reminder, I've got my full script protocols in there. There are other practitioners that have protocols. If you want to submit to do a protocol, if you'd like my help with like kind of understanding, whoa, that just sprinted forward. Um, what I've put in one, um, certainly you can 
uh, download it, and then rip and repeat. Just look at the sections and fill in what you would be talking to your patients about. Um, but of course, I'm also happy uh, to connect with you on that part. I also do go through these pretty regularly. We have a private Facebook group for, oh my goodness, sorry, um, for practitioners um, called the Better Nutrition Program Provider Group. Um, so you're welcome to pop in there. And uh, like today, we did an interview on prebiotics and talked about digestive health and went over the prebiotic guide. So these are just examples of our different tools. So now what I want to do is just stop this and we're going to move into the Q&A. Um, I want to let you know that I offer for Fullscript because they are exceptional partners to me and also because I know that if you are investing in a Fullscript store, you want to be helping your patients with total nutrition. It is We know that that's what the opportunity is there and really how that leads to better compliance and better outcomes. So this is our most aggressive, you will not find a better code, our most aggressive um, discount that you can use Fullscript 30. Um, on our shop of tools, that's only through October. Um, so uh, on the shop of tools, which gets you the practitioner evaluations, plus the patient evaluations, a private training session with me, joining our provider referral network, you get all these annual updates, you get some bonus new tools coming on board. Um, but you can also, uh, if you're interested in doing the digestive tune-up um, for that one, you can use the full script 30 on the gut instinct package. I didn't include the link here. Welcome to email Ashley at the better nutrition program.com. And I will share that with you, or you can go to the website and under patient resources, you'll see the shop and you just go under packages. Gut instinct is there. And that is how you sign up for um, doing the digestive tune up. If you've decided to do the digestive tune up for those 30 days, um, then my recommendation is invite anyone to do it with you for free because you'll already have the tools. So that part is great. And this is also the link, and I believe um, Cam was putting that link in there as well um, for uh, where we can, where you can get the, um, uh, where you can get the practitioner um, uh, full script store. Sorry. Okay. So, um, okay. I think we addressed sound. I'm going to dive over into the Q and A. Uh, I'm going to try to get all of them. And let me go. Yes, there's a CBD guide, uh, one of my favorites, because it goes through how to choose a better product, what questions you need to ha ask um, your patients, what questions they should be answering for practitioners, um, and also what are potentials for interactions. And remember with CBD, you guys, just because there's a potential for interaction doesn't mean you can't use CBD. You just have to assess total nutrition, right, and use it that way. Um, and what do I look for with skincare ingredients? Are there any handouts or info on those ingredients? So, you know what, we used to have a guide. I'll be very honest. I've had a lot of trouble keeping up with the changing ingredients. I can, you know, keeping up with it in food and supplements. Um, so I'm probably not the, the best uh, on that part. Made Safe is an excellent resource um, for that. Um, if you wanna email me, I'll send you some suggestions. What I will tell you is if you go to our skin package, What a Beauty, which is on, again, under patient resources, under the shop, you'll see the nutrition assessment tools that we recommend for um, uh, uh, working on somebody's skin nutrition. You will see some of the products that I like and that we've looked at over the years and that are consistently, uh, companies that are consistently um, doing well. Um, and in our uh, digestive tune-up, we actually are very specific about what uh, skincare products we recommend using. Because if you're tuning up your digestion, you actually, during that time period, really want to focus on on that part. I also think it would be great for um, uh, full script to expand into skincare. Just saying, okay, anyway, um, please expand on the scientific research informing your choice to increase the alkaline forming foods in case study number two. So what I want to say is, um, I and maybe I, I am certain I was moving a million miles uh, at a pace. Um, so I think that there is good information um, and we can look at the science together. I can look at it offline. I don't have a research to quote to you right now but just about the role of consuming alkaline forming foods. Now, remember, I'm not saying acid, uh, foods that are acid or alkaline outside of the body. I'm thinking about things like lemons and limes that um, weak acids outside of the body, but they help to stimulate the release of sodium bicarb. So we'll call them more acid, excuse me, more alkaline forming, right? Um, and the goal there was not to increase the alkaline forming foods just as, oh, get in more alkaline forming foods. What I had seen in her food journal, which you didn't have the benefit of seeing, was this was coffee, chocolate, alcohol, um, uh, some sweets, like sometimes sugar was an issue, meat, 
da uh, some dairy and um, there was an absence. So what I was looking for is a better balance there. So so the if I had said the word increase, it would have meant to just do a better job of balancing. I hope that answers your question, Tiara, Tiara or Kiara. It might be Kiara. I like that. Um, and um, Kiara to Tiara, uh, what ingredients do you not like if easier to answer with skincare? Okay, great. So really great question, um, Tiara. And we can, you know, maybe what we'll do is a, a session on this in our um, Facebook provider group and, and bring in an expert. Um, you know, part of it is what are we, is the opportunity with our skincare to actually nourish our digestive system, right? And for some things it can be, right? You can get in nutrients that are going to be um, supporting and maintaining healthy skin so that the mucosal layer, so that our skin is robust and, um, you know, it sweats, but it doesn't, you know, we're not blocking certain things. So it might be changing deodorant in that way. Um, you know, I love like, uh, for example, the tea tree oil, um, uh, Dr. Bronner's, like for hand washing and for, I wash my dog in it and, you know, I'll, uh, for taking a bath in it. Um, so I think that there are things that can be nourishing to the skin while cleaning, as opposed to just, you know, uh, being harsher on, um, from a removal standpoint. And then of course, anything that is a topical antibiotic, we have to be conscious of, uh, that it could be a topical and that it is that topical is going to be a digestive antibiotic on that part. And then you might also want to look at things like retinols or retinoids in skincare because, and it's actually coming up in our eye health uh, nutrition exam uh, or nutrition assessment tool where your vitamin A total intake, you want to make sure that we're doing well there, but that we're not too high. And sometimes the place where it's too high uh, might come from uh, skincare as well on that part. Um, yeah, any help for patients with idiopathic chronic urticaria? You know, I think that for me, the digestive tune-up, you've probably been down this path, Patrick. So what we could do is um, take this one offline, Ashley, at the betternutritionprogram.com. Um, I think that uh, the two places that I would look, and I have dealt with, with patients in this space, is um, really looking at digestive health and then also looking at uh, skincare. But sometimes also um, some environmental pieces, uh, you know, certainly are a factor. Um, how did you create your questionnaires, Carrie? Oh my gosh, they take me like 15. I, I just did an assessment um, with this eye health exam. I love it. Like it, I'm such a geek because I like dive in and ask the experts. So we always work with other experts and I get to interview them and ask the questions. And then when I'm asking the questions um, from them, then we go back and forth and then we have a designer. So all in all, it takes us about 15 hours to create an evaluation over you know, it, like two or three months, uh, potentially back and forth. Um, it, it's probably, I'm willing to say five-ish hours of a load for a practitioner. Um, and then uh, after that, then I also do a vetting um, with a couple of other experts. I like to uh, do that multidisciplinary. So um, to have different practitioners, a health coach, a chiropractor, a fitness professional. Um, and then I'll actually usually, I have a couple of different people, um, i.e. my English uh, teacher, ex-English teacher mother, who will read through them, but I just wanna make sure that the, the questions uh, make some sense on that part. Um, and we're always discovering that like just recently, uh, somebody said, you know, I think that the way that you're asking the questions about going number one and going number two could be better. And so we improved upon that, um, that one as well. Um, so that gives you a sense. Uh, so I always say to people, if you wanna make your own, go for it. Um, we're trying to save you money. Um, we, we offer these to you to purchase once and then we update them. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're getting the shop of tools and we handle all of that so that you can use them and then you can also use them to grow your business by using them in marketing. Um, I'm sorry, Rahima, if the sound was cutting out. I, I expect that it won't be in the replay, but if you had any questions, I'm happy to help you. Do I use a certain app? No, you know, for diet analysis, I don't use a certain app or program. Um, what I tend to do is to be a little bit at the whim of my clients if they have something that they love, which is probably not the best way to do it because I end up being the one that um, has to learn all these different ones. Um, but I just find that everybody thinks and interacts and responds to something or likes something or, you know, and especially today, people have spent so much money on things. And so if they've invested in something, I want to figure out a way that I can uh, use it with them. Um, so we don't do that. I do work with um, a couple of uh, dietitians um, and their programs who do nutrition assessments. So uh, if we need to know about nutrient analysis of a recipe or things like that, and a lot of their meal plans um, also have that. So if that's more the angle that you were going in, um, great. Uh, thank you, Patrick. I appreciate that. Phil, thank you. Um, 
oh gosh, Brian is saying that the audio is bad now. I hope not. Um, do I sell the guides individually or as a whole packet? We do both. So we sell the guides, we sell the whole shop of tools. Um, and in my mind, that's the win for your money, but I understand that's an investment, but you'll also save 30% right now. And then the other side of it is we also sell everything as a one-off. So we have the guides, the menus, and the um, evaluations individually. And then we also provide, um, and we have our uh, plan and our journal um, individually, we also provide packages so that you can get some of the tools uh, done that way. A huge shout out to Krista who popped in here with the CBD guide link and also with the, um, the What a Beauty skin package. And remember, the reason I was directing you guys to that is not just to see which tools we recommend for skin nutrition assessment, um, but also to see what products I like uh, on that part. So Tiara, that one might be helpful for you. Um, do you have a genetic program that you like for new? Okay, so my go-to on that part, Patrick, in terms of genetic genomic is, um, I love the Genomic Kitchen and she has an incredible new book uh, that just came out. Um, and so I always turn to her and ask her any questions that uh, I have about which um, uh, protocols to use. We actually just did a great interview with her, with Amanda Archibald on MTHFR. I highly recommend it, just forewarning, we got very sciencey, it's on my YouTube page, um, but I'm also happy to make that connection if helpful. And thank you um, for telling me that the audio still sounds okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you. It makes me feel better. Okay, I went one minute over, oh, I tried. Cam, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll give everyone their one minute back. Um, I just wanna say thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and I just, uh, in terms of full script, if you are not uh, currently using the protocols and if you're not optimizing your shop as, uh, I hate to say this, but we are in business, these aren't hobbies, but if you're not using it as a marketing vehicle to actually share communication around total nutrition, I highly recommend that. You can create recommendations and provide this content within, the, within that. Um, it's also a great way to check up with someone. So one of the things that I'll do is I'll drop into their, uh, like if it's been, you know, maybe I saw someone, it's been three months and um, I'm probably a little bit aggressive because if it's been like three months and three days and I haven't heard from them, I'm reaching out, right? Um, but if, uh, if you're, you know, saying like, hey, I haven't heard from them and I'm wondering how they're doing, you know, you can easily pop back in and say, hey, I'd love to have you redo that, um, that uh, digestive evaluation or let's go back to doing the heart health evaluation or you know what it's been a year are your cholesterol levels still good um, because life changes a lot in the year and i find that communication coming through that as long as they're they know they it, first of all it's very personalized because you have that connection with them through the full script store um and so i think that that just can uh run you know can be another way that you can have those um, communications and, and have that uh, work more effectively on, from a marketing standpoint. So um, that's just my two cents on how awesome Fullscript is and uh, they keep growing. So there, there you go. And you found the digestive tune-up guy, but what about the program? Um, so for the program, um, Krista, I'm gonna ask you if you're still here to just grab us the gut instinct um, package. Um, and I am also going to direct you, Marla, uh, Evan, Marla, if you want to go to um, under where, where you got the digestive tune-up guide, if instead you go to the packages, you'll see the gut instinct and it's 195, but you get 30% off. If you purchase that set of tools, that will automatically, you'll get an email from us um, that will find out if you wanna join us on the 16th. Um, and our registration for that closes on the um, 13th and we're about half full. So I hope that um, that works uh, for you. And Krista is actually getting you the link because she's amazing. Um, and that I think will do it for us. I'll just wait uh, another minute for her to grab that uh, link for you, Marla. If anyone has any final questions, things I didn't answer, things you were hoping to get out of today, um, I also just really love the opportunity to do these with um, uh, with full script. So if there's ever a topic that you think um, you would love to hear from me on, uh, please let me know and I'll uh, talk to the team and see if it's one that that works for them as well. And there you have the, um, that is the uh, package that will give you the sign up for the, um, uh, for the gut instinct, uh, um, excuse me, for the digestive tune up, the 30 day. Okay, everyone. Signing off, Cam, thank you so much. Um, team at Fullscript, thank you so much. And I hope everybody has an incredible week. 
um, and you just, you feel like you got some knowledge and uh, I really appreciate this hour together. So thank you.